Hello everyone, and welcome to day two of the Creator Camp World Generation. We're going to talk about the biomes and world generation roadmap. And here to kick us off is Kat. There Hi. We go. So a little bit about me. Um, if you didn't catch me yesterday, I'm the product manager at Gameplay Systems, uh, and I am what we call an inadvertent world generation enthusiast. So today we're going to cover a little bit about world generation, a little bit about biomes, a little bit about the world generation roadmap. So we're going to get started about world generation. So when I first heard that we were going to be making custom biomes, I didn't really understand what that meant. I thought a biome encompassed everything in the world as you're traversing under the sky. Later, I found out it's not exactly true. So what is world generation? So it really just breaks down to a bunch of uh, different phases. We did cover this in day one, but to give a refresher, world generation is broken down in a couple different sections. And then the step one, the world terrain is generated. This is the calculations of the hills and the valleys before the blocks themselves are generated. Step two, the world generation determines the best biomes that should appear in a specific location. And then step three, the world starts to fill out the surface with blocks, foundational blocks, caves, and other generated selections from world generation. So that's part one. Part two, uh, step four, the features are placed. This includes things like trees, flowers, and even ore. This is when the structures are layered on as well, both from base game and any custom ones. This is where the jigsaw structures that we looked at yesterday all come into play. Lastly, you, the player, enter the world and can begin to play and make the world your own. So once I understood what all biomes encompass, I made it my mission to make a candy biome. An old experiment did exist pre-Caves and Cliffs that worked for custom biomes before, but we broke it. Pre-Caves and Cliffs, the biome was added to a list and was added to the total biome percentage. Post-Caves and Cliffs, the biome selection process was changed to be based on terrain and other biome factors. So you might be asking, how do we choose a biome now? Great question. Now the world is terrain is generated. A biome is selected between, for, from a list of available vanilla biomes based on the factors of erosion and temperature. The biome selection then does some very complicated math, which we then stick into a black box. We wait for the calculations complete. And when they're done, a biome comes out that we replace by a percentage defined by you. And that is how you get a custom biome. So how do I get started? Well, it's been released into experimental. It is testable with the toggle, and you should try it out and let us know of any bugs you find. OK, but really, where do I even get started with the code? Now I understand how the custom candy biome works in world generation. So the first step is to follow directions on creating a custom uh, behavior pack so that the game can read the information for my, for my custom biome. Once that's complete, I need a folder named biomes so I can house my JSON there. But what does the JSON look like? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to walk you through the JSON and we're going to see what it makes. So we start with the format version and the identifier. This is always the most important part of a biome, making sure that you pick an identifier that is unique and memorable. For me, it's my name and candy biome. So next we define the characteristics of the biome. So this is things like the rain, the snow, temperature, and climate. Next we define some of the materials that make up the biome. This includes things like the depth of the seafloor and what it's made out of, the foundational materials, which is the blocks very far down, like deep slate, the material, top material, which is like surface decoration, like grass or sand. It's like when sand is on a beach and you dig down and then you finally find stone. And the mid material, which is anything between the two. Any and all of those can be replaced with custom blocks, though it does sound slow down the game a little right now. Next, we define what the biome knows about itself. In this case, it allows animal spawns, can have structure trail ruin spawn, is a forest, and is part of the overworld. Lastly, it defines what vanilla biomes it replaces. For this one, we're replacing any forest biome in the overworld all of the time. So if you've set up your biome and you can't change anything to everything you want to, check to see if it's available in the client side biomes file. This could be placed in the resources file, it should be placed in the resources file, and can control things like ambient sound and music, fog, foliage and grass color, sky and watercolor. All right, so we've been through all of this. So what does it actually look like? 
Hope I haven't lost you yet. So we're going to take a look. You can see in there, uh, it's all custom block surface blocks, vegetation, and some candy geodes. As you can see, any vanilla structures that would spawn on a forest spawn in the biome because of the tags that we added. You can't see much of the climate since I'm mimicking a normal forest biome, but you can see the custom surface blocks as you look down into the canyon. This particular capture was taken from when we replaced all of the biomes, but you can see what it would look like if we have a bunch of forests next to each other. You can also see as we pan over the water, it's got a purple tint and the air color is lavender hue as well. Both of that come from the client biomes value file. I love seeing all of this come together. And if you and you think that we're done, right? Don't need to do anything else. Well, it's not exactly right. So let's dive into the roadmap to see where we are and what we have left to do. First off, let's start with what's out. So custom blocks, features, and feature rules are all released into the wild. You can and probably do, play with them all today. Custom blocks are the data-driven building blocks of the world that can contain custom geometry, textures, and behaviors. If you're interested in learning more, my delightful co-conspirator, Steven, did a great talk on them yesterday, and you can catch it on the VOD. Features and feature rules are all the pretty decorations that go on, and sometimes under, the surface and create a feeling of a Minecraft world. This is things like trees, flowers, vines, geodes, fossils, vegetation, and more. So what's next? Well, the partial biomes replacement. This is a new experiment that just released into preview that allows you to replace a percentage of that existing biome up to 100%. We're still in testing and it is behind a toggle, so be sure to flip it on and give it a try. You saw all the things you could change and update, but if there's anything that you think is missing, go ahead and give us some feedback. Next up. Jigsaw structures. We covered this in day one, but as a reminder, jigsaw structures let you create large, complex structures during world generation. You get to build the small pieces of the structure and define how they can be randomly connected throughout the world. Some other future things for us to look at, spawn rules, and a lot of biomes improvements. And we know the question on everybody's mind, dimensions, since they would be awesome and interesting. But as you can see, the things we have planned are huge still in flight and being iterated on. Anything beyond that has not been scoped or planned. All right, so now I get to turn it over to you. Any questions? Question here from Q Desperation. Hello, I have a question. Do you plan for world gen jigsaw structures to have terrain matching possible, just like the grass paths on villages? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. And I'm so glad Dana is here to help me answer this yes, question. I gotcha. <laughs> so we actually do have ter terrain matching right now. We have both rigid and terrain matching. So you might be wondering when should we use one over the other? So let's say you have something you want, like you have a house. You probably don't want the house to terrain match to the hill, right? So you, let's have that, um, you're gonna wanna make that house to be rigid. But let's say you have a path. You probably want the path to uh, ebb and flow with the hills. So you're gonna want that to be terrain matching. Um, so hope that was a roundabout way of saying, yes, we have that right now. So go and play with that cue desperation. All right. We have another question. It is, what do you have planned for spawn rules? So how about I throw it to you, Kat, first for now. Excellent. Yeah, so we're looking at what our options are there. We're currently still building out what the project is, but I do want to say that we are looking at them to see what, how we can uh, involve them in all the rest of the world generation projects. So we have biomes, we have structures. We're taking a look at what is it possible for us to do in order to make sure that the spawn rules work as we expect and can mimic a lot of vanilla behavior as much as we can. Sounds great. Thank you for that question. Laura Macias asks, Hey, I noticed that there are certain values or numbers for rain, snow, or more. How do I know what value is more likely to be what I'm looking for? 
For example, how do I know if heavy rain is 0 0.2 or 4.5? That is an excellent question. So we are still working on a lot of our documentation, um, going through and making sure. But anything that you're going to have for this, it's going to be on learn.microsoft.com. You are always welcome to check there and for any updates um, and as we're going through. And if anything's unclear, please feel free to let us know and we're happy to update there. Um, additionally, you can always just do what I do, which is try it and <laughs> figure out which one it is. Um, but for each individual one, uh, you're generally going to want to look on learn.microsoft.com in the biome section. And just another note, we are also adding more sample values into the docs to help people understand the values. So we got gotcha. you. Thank you for the question, Laura. Moving on to MADLAD, what does bioimprovements refer to? There's a lot of uh, different improvements that we determined weren't necessary for us to get it into your hands for, um, for just experimental. There's a lot more server improvements that we want to take a look at, things that like you know, performance improvements, things that are smaller that we think that can go alongside with you guys testing. So we do have some of those planned. Um, as as they're coming out, they will be announced in the uh, change log. So you'll be able to keep an eye out for them there in a biome section. Sounds great. Kamira Dev asks, is there a plan to allow different world generators to work together? For example, add-on A and add-on B have world generation, but they clash. Ah, excellent question. Uh, that is something we're actually looking at right now in the experimental. Theoretically, we're not stopping anybody from adding multiple add-ons with the different uh, the biome selections. Um, there is some some code that is behind the scenes on how it picks whichever one it is. Um, so I recommend that you keep an eye out on the learn.microsoft.com website for all the documentation there um, to make sure that it is that you get an answer. And if you don't, feel free to let us know and we'll make sure that it gets up there. Thank you for that. Mac Murray asks, oh, Mac Murray Music asks, question, is there going to be custom fluids like water? And is there an easy way to place uh, a block like amber that goes behind blocks and on top of them? Ooh, good question. Uh, I absolutely think you should try it out. Um, I do know that you can replace the water with lava. We definitely saw that. Um, that was a fun day um, as we all watched <laughs> our forest burn down. Um, but you should definitely uh, give it a try and let us know if there's something that you're missing to be able to do it. Um, anything that you should be able to do with custom blocks should be able to be replaced as a surface block or as a, a generation block as like a structure or something like that. Um, so anything that you... Uh, have there would be perfectly acceptable to use in the custom block section. If there is, as I said, if there is anything that you're missing, let us know because we would love to see if we can support it. Awesome. And I believe this is our last question. Kayoga asks, it's super amazing to see custom biomes being worked on. I'm super excited to see their future. Will it be possible to do custom dungeons with procedural, procedural generation in the future? Uh, as we're working in the custom structures, jigsaw structure space, that feels like the right place mm -hmm. to start working on your custom dungeons, um, being able to go in and build and have it procedurally generate. I believe that Mike at one point has made something similar. Yes. So I'm excited for, you might want to, I think that's in the sample pack if I'm correct, yes. um, or on learn.microsoft.com. So one of those two places, it, I think it's available. So you should be able to check it out if you want to start making your own. Yeah, if you go to our learning docs, there is a jigsaw tutorial that Mike made, and he actually makes a dungeon. And if you alter the start val the start height value, you can definitely make it generate under the ground. So I think we have that available for you. Go and have fun there. So absolutely, if you make something like that, show us. We're so excited to see everything you guys make. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kat, for that wonderful presentation. And have fun, guys.